with well, America Weight, and I want to thank you very much for joining me for another whiskey study. I have been falling in love with Compass Box, a whiskey company. I've recently reviewed a uh, Compass Box Spice Tree, an extravaganza, and that did uh, an uncorking of the uh, Compass Box Hedonism on uh, the, the Whiskey Church on Memorial Day weekend. I've also been uh, paying more attention to and learning about how whiskeys develop as they sort of open up as you go through the bottle. So I wanted to do something a little bit different and sort of bring something over from my experience in the wine world into the whiskey world. Um, essentially what I want to do is I'm going to double decant this bottle. So I've got it down to almost to the shoulder. Usually I wouldn't want to do a formal review now until I get it past the shoulder about at least three quarter way up from the bottom, right around on the label. But I, I want to do something a little different uh, in uh, doing a double decanting. You should be saying, well, what is that? In the wine world, in decanting, you decant usually a red wine to remove um, sediment from an older uh, red wine or to get a, a younger wine to sort of open up. Double decanting is when you want to preserve the presentation in the bottle. So you decant the wine, remove any sediment, and then you put it back into the bottle so that you can then um, present it at a table. So I thought I could kind of do the same thing in wanting to get the entire bottle to really open up is double decant it. So I've got here a Riedel wine decanter. I'm gonna de pour some first, pour some in a glass right out of the bottle, then do a double decanting, which I put some in the decanter, swirl it around, give it some air, put it back into the bottle, and then pour myself a glass, and then compare the two to see if there are any uh, major differences. But um, before I jump into all this, here are my notes on uh, this particular uh, bottling of Compass Box Hedonism, and you're gonna wanna pay attention because at the end of this video, there's gonna be a quiz. Compass Box's Hedonism is produced only once per year. It is a 100% blended grain scotch whiskey. Grain whiskey is produced by cooking unmalted cereal grains, such as wheat or maize, and then combining them with some malted barley to use the enzymes to help kickstart fermentation. While most other Scotch whiskies are made in batches with a pot still, grain whiskies are typically distilled using the continuous patent column still process, a method pioneered and refined in the 19th century. The process is more efficient than single malt distillation and the aim is to produce a spirit high in alcohol and light in character. The spirit for hedonism is sourced from three lowland grain distilleries. Cameron Bridge Distillery in the lowlands. Cameron Bridge is the largest and oldest grain distillery in Europe. Cambus Distillery in the lowlands, which closed in 1993. And Karsbridge Distillery, also in the Lowlands, closed in 1983. The bottle's batch code, H29MMIX, indicates that 14 100% first fill American oak casts were used, consisting of 29-year-old Karsbridge, 18-year-old Cambus, and 14-year-old Cameron Bridge. The Compass Box Hedonism is bottled at 43% alcohol by volume, that is natural color and is non-chill filtered. Now, some of you are going to think, wow, Eric, you're really exposing that whiskey to a lot of air. You must be crazy. Well, uh, first I'm going to say is no, my mother had me tested. Second is um, in exploration, there's always a risk trying something different, thinking outside the box. Um, and once I get sort of an idea to try something new, something I haven't seen before, 
it, until I do it, it's sort of just gonna be stuck in my head. So I, I thought I'd give this a try. The whiskey costs about $100. A lot of other their bottlings cost a lot more. The spice tree, um, initial spice tree, costs about $70, which I think is a great bang for the buck. Extravaganza is about $120. So I love the extravaganza. Wouldn't want to do it with this one. But I wasn't, I have to admit, 100% just thrilled with this whiskey uh, at the end corking. I thought it was okay, but I want to give it another try. Alrighty, so the uh, glass on my right, I actually meant to pour it straight from the bottle, forgot, so I poured it from the decanter before I, so this has been double decanted. This has only been single decanted. I meant to pour it straight from the bottle and just forgot, wasn't paying attention. There may or may not be any differences. Um, it may be an improvement, it may not. But I'm gonna get a lot of questions answered. This is just a, an experiment, something to try. Alrighty. Single decant. I'm gonna do the nosing first. Double decant. Hmm. Try it again. It's at 43% alcohol by volume. Neither one of them is, is a major sort of tingling on the nose. Not a major difference. I'm not seeing any major impact. Unfortunately, I wish I had gone straight from the bottle. I wish I could have even done this at the uncorking. That would have been yeah, another experiment, but let's keep going. So what do I get on the nose? So it's made from cereal grains. I tried to find out the specific um, makeup. I sent an email to um, Compass Box. What I found is, so their headquarters is in England. They have uh, barrels all over uh, Scotland, not any one particular place. And they have a lot of different cereal grain mixes. So you may have a box of hedonism that's going to be a different mash than mine. But generally, it's going to be uh, probably either, um, as I said in the video, maize, corn, um, could be unmalted barley, uh, or wheat. If I were to put money on it, as I was picking up in the uncorking, I'm picking up bourbon-like notes. Now, bourbon-like note is corn. I'm picking up corn. Wheat tends to get a real softness. Um, if you think of uh, Maker's Mark, they use a, um, a winter wheat. Tends to get a softness, a creaminess, a croissant, uh, dough-like character to it. So I get fruits. I get a little bit of a green apple, light pear, a light peach, canned and candied. Some cinnamon, cardamom. There is a grainy smell to it. Um, um, perhaps if you were working in a bakery and there were some uh, flour, you know, cornmeal, so that kind of stuff, sort of in the air and spread all over the tables and on your hands, it's that sort of a character to it. Some nice florals, maybe some honeysuckle. It's not a huge nose. It's not pronounced. I would say it's medium intense. Vanilla, a lot of vanilla. There's sort of a um, light caramel candied note to it. Light toffee, vanilla pudding, vanilla wafers, and a little bit of banana or just vanilla pudding. Let's try the double decanted. It's not opened up anymore. I'm not seeing any major differences. You know, not every ex experiment's gonna be, be totally re revelatory, right? You may have a major income, I mean outcome. You may have a minor one, you may not have one at all. It's just an experiment. Pretty much the same. All right, on the palate. Mm. Well, wow. 
I'm gonna get some water. Hold on. Should have thought of that beforehand. All right, double decanted. I'm, I am noticing a difference on the palate. Didn't so much on the nose, but let me go back. It's minor. Maybe you might notice a difference, maybe you might. After double decanting, it's smoother, creamier, uh, I, don't, I don't mean buttery in terms of butter flavors, but in terms of texture, it's velvety. I know some people don't like to hear smooth, but it's creamier, it's smoother um, on the double decanting. Um, I'm getting a, a little bit of a spike, spicy spike in sort of in the middle on the, on the palate uh, on the first one, not so much on the second. Mm -hmm. It's opened up more. It has a rounder, smoother, creamier tex a texture. It's a little bit more mouth filling, but this, the differences are very, very, very subtle. It's not like a major, huge difference. But on the palate, the nose is confirmed. Can and candied pear, apple, peach. There's cinnamon, nutmeg, Light corn notes, not like a bourbon, you know, not like Maker's Mark or uh, Buffalo Trace or, you know, um, a Jim Beam bourbon or anything like that. But I do get lighter corn notes. Um, so almost a light caramel corn, candy corn, those sort of notes. It's medium bodied and has a, a fairly lengthy finish. So, score-wise, I'm going to give it 88 points. I'm not as in love with this as I was with the Spice Treat or the Extravaganza. But it's a good whiskey. If you're into bourbons and you like bourbons, um, and maybe you're not so much into scotches, you might want to try this out because in a lot of ways, it seems to me like a, a lighter version of of a scotch. It's not as sort of super rich and sweet as a lot of bourbons are, um, but it has a very similar uh, profile. Um, overall, it's a good whiskey. Is it worth a hundred bucks? For 70 bucks, you can get the Spice Tree. Hands down, Spice Tree blows this away. Absolutely. And it's, you know, $20, $30 cheaper, depending on where you buy it. All right. That's it for uh, this little review of this whiskey. And now, time for the quiz. Question one, a grain whiskey production typically uses what type of still? A, pot still, B, a continuous column still, C, coffee still, or D, a patent still? And the answer is B, a continuous column still, C, a coffee still, and D, a patent still. Uh, continuous column still, coffee still, and patent still are all synonyms. So if you chose uh, any one of these, you are correct. Question two, grain whiskey is usually made with A, malted barley, B, unmalted barley, C, cereal grains such as wheat or corn, or D, rice? And the answer is C, cereal grains such as wheat or corn. Now that we'll use just a little bit of malted barley, not for the barley itself, but for the enzymes, because enzymes is needed in order to uh, convert uh, the starches into sugar, or they may just add enzymes. Question three, hedonism is made from spirits from all the following distilleries except for A, Cameron Bridge Distillery, B, Cambus Distillery, C, Clydesdale Distillery, or D, Carsbridge Distillery? And the answer is 
C. Clydesdale Distillery. All four of these are lowland distilleries, but they produce their whiskey from Cameron, Cambus, and Carsbridge Distillery. Question four. Which distillery is the oldest and largest grain distillery in Europe? A. Cameron Bridge, B. Cambus, or C. Carsbridge? And the answer is Cameron Bridge. It is the oldest and largest grain distillery in all of Europe. Question five. Cambus Box Hedonism is aged in what type of casks? A. Ex Cognac Cask from the Limousin Forest in France, B. Oloroso Sherry Casks, C. Ex Tokai Casks from Hungary, or D. 100% First Fill American Oak Casks? And the answer is D. Compass Box Hedonism is aged in 100% First Fill American Oak Casks. Alrighty, so I really want to thank uh, Compass Box for being who they are. Um, and producing the whiskeys that they do and, and the take uh, that they do and, and their goal to be as transparent as possible with their consumers. Not just to produce an honest whiskey, but for those of us who are students of whiskey and not merely drinkers of whiskey, uh, we like to get nerdy and get in depth into the nitty gritty details of whatever it is we're drinking, whether it's wine or, or whiskey or some other spirit. So I really want to give uh, a big thanks to Compass Box in uh, producing these whiskeys and uh, look forward to uh, reviewing and studying a few more of them in the near future. All right, that's it for uh, this study and review. If you subscribe to this channel, well, thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, if you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it. If you subscribe, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking channels. And until next time, Cheers. If you have benefited from my wine or whiskey studies and you wish to support this ongoing work, I ask that you become a Patreon supporter. The link to my Patreon account is in the description box below.